everyone in this room knows what will happen if we do nothing. Our deficit will grow, more families will go bankrupt, more businesses will close. More Americans will lose their coverage when they are sick and need it the most, and more will die as a result. We know these things to be true. That is why we cannot fail, because there are too many Americans counting on us to succeed. The ones who suffer silently and the ones who share their stories with us at town halls, in emails, and in letters. I received one of those letters a few days ago. It was from our beloved friend and colleague, Ted Kennedy. He had written it back in May, shortly after he was told that his illness was terminal. He asked that it be delivered upon his death. In it, he spoke about what a happy time his last months were. Thanks to the love and support of family and friends, his wife Vicki, his amazing children, who are all here tonight. And he expressed confidence that this would be the year that health care reform, that great unfinished business of our society, he called it, would finally pass. He repeated the truth that health care is decisive for our future prosperity. But he also reminded me that it concerns more than material things. What we face, he wrote, is above all a moral issue. At stake are not just the details of policy, but fundamental principles of social justice and the character of our country. I've thought about that phrase quite a bit in recent days. The character of our country. One of the unique and wonderful things about America has always been our self-reliance, our rugged individualism, our fierce defense of freedom, and our healthy skepticism of government. And figuring out the appropriate size and role of government has always been a source of rigorous and, yes, sometimes angry debate. That's our history. For some of Ted Kennedy's critics, his brand of liberalism represented an affront to American liberty. In their minds, his passion for universal health care was nothing more than a passion for big government. But those of us who knew Teddy and worked with him here, people of both parties, know that what drove him was something more. His friend, Orrin Hatch, he knows that. They work together to provide children with health insurance. His friend, John McCain, knows that. They work together on a patient's bill of rights. His friend Chuck Grassley knows that. They work together to provide health care to children with disabilities. On issues like these, Ted Kennedy's passion was born not of some rigid ideology, but of his own experience. It was the experience of having two children stricken with cancer. He never forgot the sheer terror and helplessness that any parent feels when a child is badly sick. And he was able to imagine what it must be like for those without insurance, what it'd be like to have to say to a wife or a child or an aging parent, there is something that could make you better, but I just can't afford it. That large-heartedness, that concern and regard for the plight of others is not a partisan feeling. It's not a Republican or a Democratic feeling. It, too, is part of the American character. Our ability to stand in other people's shoes. A recognition that we are all in this together. That when fortune turns against one of us, others are there to lend a helping hand. A belief that in this country, hard work and responsibility should be rewarded by some measure of security and fair play and an acknowledgment that sometimes government has to step in to help deliver on that promise.